Hi, this is Chai from Office, and welcome to our fourth part of our presentation on AWS versus Azure, which is the one that we did at eClub in July 2015. This one is about uh, design concepts. How would you design a two-tier, three-tier architecture in Azure or AWS and how they compare, and also how you would integrate with your on-premises uh, integration. So we hope you enjoy that. Uh, we obviously provide multi-cloud services, so we can help you migrate uh, your applications, your infrastructure from on-premises or a managed service infrastructure into the cloud and make that multi-cloud. Cloud mobility is really what that is at. We can help you do that with automation, orchestration, and provide the governance and control you need to manage the costs and manage the licensing and access issues with, uh, that comes with all of those. So we hope you enjoy, and there's a white paper you can download as well. Thanks. Design concepts. Okay, take it away, Pan. What's better about AWS? <laughs> Um, pop to the next slide. <laughs> so we, I, we talked earlier on about the VPC. You cannot create an Amazon account without a VPC. Uh, your virtual private cloud, and inside the virtual virtual private cloud, you've got your subnet, you've got your um, network access list, you've got your route table, security groups, um, and you'll be able to sprawl that across your two availability zones, um, and then you've got your internet gateway. Uh, VPC peering is basically if you have a different VPC, virtual private cloud, different accounts, or um, within the same account you can create multiple different um, private network, you can link them in together and so they can talk together and it's, it's pretty communicating through sort of the internal network, if you want to call it. And then you've got your, obviously your virtual gateway um, through it. Um, when to use VPC? All the time. But you cannot run uh, an Amazon environment properly, efficiently, without a, a VPC. And what about IPS? So IPS is Intrusion Prevention System. Your security groups, your subnets, your, uh, your uh, access control list, they don't do packet inspection, right? What, if you require an IPS, you need to spin up an EC2 with a firewall. So it can inspect the packets of malicious um, data or whatever it is you need to do. And because it's an EC2, you need to be able to build it across multiple availability zones and have the ability to fail over. Um, but um, if you don't require that and all you want is port 80 coming in, going out and, you know, service unable to communicate to each other, then availability zones needs to and that's all part of your account. There's no additional cost with that um, besides compute and storage and additional um, uh, applications that you want to run. Oh, it's still my slide. I'm going to okay. keep going. Um, um, so that's pretty much a, a really yeah. basic design of a VPC, really, environment. You've got the VPC, you've got your availability zone. In this instance, you can see this is availability zone A, or well, availability zone 1. Um, and then you create your, you know, your, your subnets, and within your subnet, and that little lock there talks about security groups. And security group pretty much talks about anything inside here, because it's basically EC2 bound. And basically, this guy can't talk to this guy or you know, you've got multiple applications in there, and then you've got your subnet saying that he can't talk to that, or you know, along the way you go. Different IP, internal IP addresses you can create um, based on your, um, you know, whatever your network policy rule is. Um, so we'll just go that fairly quickly. I'm not gonna go through the steps of it. Two availability. Yeah. The next slide is about high availability, and Amazon talks about when you build an environment, build it for failure. Don't put it in available because they don't guarantee it in uptime. Right? Uh, besides the S3s, the glaciers, and the applications. The EC2, they don't really get it, besides the host of it, and they don't guarantee the applications that it's going to be running for. In, in this topology, you're talking about two availability zones, multiple subnets, a lot of security groups, you've got your load balances there. So let's, if you talk about how the traffic comes down, it goes to the DNS, I'm punching and pan, it's going to be really good with AWS. It come, traverses down, hits the load balancer, and you can set policies around there and say, you know what? Go to availability zone A all the time, or availability zone one. Traverse down, there should be a web server here, but it's not. Go to the web server, do what you need to do, go down to that um, database and pull down information. Um, in this instance, we're gonna be talking about RDS. The RDS, basically, if that fails, Amazon will take care of the RDS, so they'll take care of the host, they'll take care of the infrastructure, they will also patch it for you. All you are concerned about is the data that's inside uh, the databases and it will help you all just go, you know what, I'm gonna create a master database. So in one, I'm gonna create a slave. Something happens along the way, AWS recognizes an RDS and go, I'm gonna fail it over. And it will actually will switch between um, slave over this side and database here. 
it's near zero. What does that mean? It's, it's not going to give you instant failover. There will be a, t a timeout or a delay, and that's probably going to be around about, you know, two minutes, three minutes. But we'll do that automatically if you choose it. Okay. So before we change, just right. go back for a second, Renee. Yep. Just memorise this slide and the way you've got three tiers on either side because it will change when you go to Azure. It's a different concept, so there'll be a test later. <laughs> Are we still with yeah. AWS? No, you've gone the wrong way. Just right? go the other yeah, way. We push over to Azure. There you go. Okay, now we're at Azure. So it's a very similar architecture because it's compute and networking and they all work the same. Um, Virtual networks is very similar to virtual private clouds. Traffic manager is the DNS and the load balancer. Um, the endpoint is actually where you do the, the translation to the gateway and the port management for the gateway. So that's how you get to the internet is via endpoints. Um, load balance sets, talking, that's where you put in your applications and your subnets. Network security um, looks after the groups in terms of users, inbound, outbound, and access points for all VMs. You have to have that. The diagram on the next page is probably the more important one. You get five IP addresses. You used not to get uh, that many IP addresses, and you now get 16 NICs, whereas you used to get one, which meant it was very hard to separate internal versus external. So that's where they do that. And then obviously the virtual network gateway, that's how you get to the internet. Uh, when would you use uh, virtual networks? Basically, anytime you want to connect two of them together, two virtual networks together, or you want to connect on premise. It's, you're pretty much going to have it all the time. So. Um, Yep, that's it. And IPS is the same thing. It's same with DNS, same with IPS, same with VPN. A lot of these things that are around the periphery of your network, if you really want high feature set, you really need to get a virtual machine or an instance and put an application on there. Same with load balancer. They do good load balancing, but not the in-depth load balancing that you know that's available now. And if you want that, then great. They're building it for the common man. Next slide, please. Okay, here's the concept which if you compare it to the other one is actually a different kind of thinking. So here's your virtual network that you build here and that's the first thing you have to build. Then you build your availability sets, two of them here, and you put your virtual machines inside that. So this is where you would have conceptually one rack, two racks, three racks. If that rack failed, the other one takes over. It's not two zones. You think of it as fault and up. So they're the two different ones that would keep running. They would guarantee this is running. It's not this side's running or this side's running. It's somewhere in here is running or not. Somewhere in here is running. You can have all three databases running and only one, one of these running. Whereas in, in AWS, it's a different concept. The left to right fails. This is more horizontal design. And you can have obviously load balances at each point and you could crawl access points through each one and then traffic manager runs at the top there. Um, on premise, you can connect your corporate network through a VPN um, and that is really just, you know, it sits up there um, you've, got a, you've got a VPN concentrate on one side, you've got a, you're utilising um, Amazon's um, VPC, virtual private cloud, within the, Viper, within the virtual private cloud, you create um, an IPsec tunnel and, um, and that's how you're able to communicate it to it and it goes through the internet but it's encrypted um, as it traverses through um, that environment. You can't, do, you can't do SSL using a VPC. Um, it doesn't allow you, it's all about site to site. If you require SSL VPN, you need to be able to put in a device, whether it's a firewall that has the ability or whether it's open VPN um, to be able to do that. But site to site VPC, you'll be able to do that. Sorry, next slide. Yep. Um, Direct Connect, um, as mentioned, it, it's pretty much a layer two connection that connects from your corporate network goes into Equinix or um, Global Switch. From there, they have a patch that goes into your AWS and it goes into your account and goes into your VPC. So, uh, and the reason why they don't want to put it together within, it's within the same data center as Amazon, and a lot of people think, oh, you know, it's, it's probably together. No, it's not. Uh, and the reason why, if Equinix goes down, what's going to happen? And if AWS is in there, you're not going to be able to communicate to your availability zone. And so it's a separate connection. You can talk to, um, if you go to Amazon's website, there's lots of, cust there's lots of actually suppliers you'll be able to, to, to quote you on that. But um, really the two suppliers are um, uh, um, Global Switch and Equinix. And again, layer two connection, up to gigabits of link um, connection from it, from your corporate network. Is it still me? No, 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 good. So Express Route is very similar to Direct Connect. Um, it's available for on-prem, it's all layer two, private link, it's a gig uh, from your office or from a managed colo and again, go to the website, have a look at the list. 
of available providers. There's quite a few of them available in Australia to choose from. It's uh, very private, very fast, very high, and you have to pay the right amount of money for it. But you can get up to 10 gigabits. So, awesome. Uh, VPN, they have site to site, um, as well as point to site, which is uh, client VPN. It's very similar to what Pan was saying before, VPN is VPN. It's a site to site from your office to um, the Azure data center. And you can send encrypted traffic. Again, maximum is 200 megabits per second. Uh, if you do with the Express, you can go between one and 10 gigabits per second. So they're the two real differences. They're pretty simple designs. 